chunk of deuce, or you can give me that. You can play it cool like you don't know how to act. You can get with this, or you can get with that. You can stay broke, or you can make a stack. You can chunk a deuce, or you can give me that. You can play it cool like you don't know how to act. What's up, Grimmer? What's going down in Oakley, Oklahoma? What is it? What is it? What is it? Hey, you see, I got Gisela here. What's up, Gisela? Man, what's going on? First of all, let's start this off right. This my boy Grim right here. And that's my boy Shadow right there. And you're watching the Grim and Shadow show right here, IG Live. You know what I'm saying? Every Saturday. 9 p.m. Man, we got a special show for y'all. We got the Juan, not the one, but the Juan and only Juan Villarreal. You know what I'm saying? That famous comedian coming straight out of Southeast Houston. You know what I'm saying? Man, he's been on BET. He's been on Comedy Central. He's been doing it, you know, real with Cedric the Entertainer, Steve Harvey. Come on, man. The list goes on. HBO specials. Kick it right now and let everybody know we're going to have Wild Real Real live. What's up, Grim? What you doing, man? What's going down? Man, we out here in Broken Bow, Oklahoma. Doing What's up, Miguel? Over here. I got, my, I got the family out here. We got friends. And uh, we just doing the cabin life out here, man. I don't know if anybody's ever been out here, but we in uh, Broken Bow and getting them cabins out here and just living that little that uh, forest life. Went to the park That earlier. forest life, huh? I How's your Wi-Fi out there? We're not gonna get broken up, are we? Nah, how do I look? I'm good, right? I'm good, we're good. Alfred Castro, what's going down? We're good, man. We're good, we're good. Beaver's been, nah, Beaver's nah, been working. Nah, right. G just joined. What's up, baby? Y'all doing good, though. We, we all good, man. Uh, Like I said, man, it's gonna be live show tonight, man. Juan, man, he's got some, he's got some funny, he's got some good stories, man. I can't, oh, man. I can't, he I can't say what I wanna say, you know. I love him, my, my daughter's here, but, uh. He's got some funny ones. In-house Real printing. Funny. What's up? Just join. You know what I'm saying? Can you give a background on the Riddler on the roof? Oh, my God. I can't do that, man. I mean, that's a question for SPM himself, man. Riddler on the roof, man. That's dope house. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Shadow, how many hours a week did you spend on producing beats? Man, bro. I, you know, I got a regular job, right? I got a regular job. What was the, what was the question, Paul? How many times I spent... Well, all I saw was how many hours a day that I spent beats, man. Dude. Before you became the master you are today. Oh, Obi-Wan. Oh, my God, bro. Obi-Wan Shinobi. Dude, Shinobi. it all Obi starts Shinobi. with the movie Beat Street. I wanted to make sure that I did all four elements of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be a graffiti artist. Knock that down. I wanted to go. First, I wanted to be a break dancer. Knock that down. Then a graffiti artist, knock that down. Then I became a DJ, knock that down. And then my brother made me a lyricist, you know what I'm saying, an MC. So those are the four elements of hip hop. And way back then, I spent every hour of my living life. Shadow living in the lab. Sure you know what I'm saying? But oh, I appreciate yeah. that, man. I live in the lab, you know what I'm saying? In fact, when Carlos was doing the uh, third wish and I was doing all this shit, you know what I'm saying? I lost my wife. I lost my wife because I lived in, oh, in the lab. Oh, you know what I'm saying? But y'all ah, back man, to don't worry about it, man. Hey, don't worry about it, man. She back with me. You know what I'm saying? It, it just took her about six years to get back with me, man. Carlos, Dang. please. What's up? What's up, baby? Hey, if you're going to be in this kind of lifestyle, if you're going to be in this kind of lifestyle, mm -hmm. you have to give up your life. You know what I'm saying? But don't give up your family. That's rule number one. Do not give up your family. Your family comes first, baby. If that's anything that I learned and I can pass it on to everybody, don't miss the graduations. Don't miss the baseball games. Don't miss the birthday parties. It ain't worth it. Hit every single one. You know what I'm saying? Do not miss none of that. Right, right, Graham? That's right. There ain't no lie. Family for real. I watched that whole Lazy interview King. on the Hustle Town. That was inspirational, man. That Lazy King. That's what's up, right on, man. Appreciate that, Shadow. Shadow be getting down. Shadow does his thing, thing. Shadow got a new album coming out too. Shadow, what is yeah. it? Oh, 
Man, today, I just let my, my son, I let my son D, we call him Danny Boy, we call him Diesel. That boy is six foot two and he's 350 pounds. We call him Diesel. I let him listen to my whole album, Exclusive, and he told me, pop. Right on, Carlos. Man, hold up, man. That motherfucker is going hard. He said it's the first album that he can listen to to the whole thing. I said, son, you just saying that because you're my son. He goes, no, Pop, Pop. If they ain't listening to this album, if they ain't down with it, it ain't meant for them. It ain't meant well, for I them. Ain't heard it. I ain't heard you know it. what I'm saying? I don't know. Hey, check this out. I'm doing 21, maybe 22. I got like 20, 21, 22 songs on this album. Everybody said, oh man, you could put out two albums. Why you gonna put out one album when you can get paid for two albums? You know why? Because I'm Shadow. I'm Shadow the OG. And I'm gonna give y'all one album for the price of two. You know what I'm saying? And it's gonna be a classic. It's an album that you can listen to all the way through. And and, and, and I say that because I'm a Dr. Dre fan. And when I listen to Dr. Dre, I listen to the whole album through. You know what I'm saying? So I want y'all to listen to this album all the way through, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm delivering. I don't give a hey, fuck. Hey, Reed said, I heard, I heard a badass song with Ike Man and Grimm called My Life. This is my life. Oh, man. Hey, but you didn't hear it. I got I lucky Grimm. on that bitch. I got lucky on that bitch. I got cassette coast on that bitch. I got Fernando on that bitch. I got Shadow. Rashid Shadow. on that motherfucker. Shadow. Shadow. We got kids in the house, bro. Relax. Oh. My bad, my bad. Oh, I'm sorry, Sally. I got, I got Fletto on that lover. I got, I got Rashid on that lover. I got, I got, who else? I got Lucky Luciano on that lover. I got Coach on that lover. You ain't heard the whole song. And I'm trying to get Juan Gotti. And guess what? Quota Keezy. Yes, sir. Twin Berettas. I'm going to put him on there. You know what I'm saying? This is my life. This is all I know. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. You know what I'm saying? If you heard the Hustle Town Underground Part 2, get ready. Get ready. What's up, Sally? Check it out. Hey, hey so Kano asked when I'm... When, who's that? Kano. Let me get it right. Let me get it right. Somebody said... Jay Bunyo said they can't go wrong. Kano hey. J.N. When, when you dropping in some some soon? Shadow's got an album coming out. Then we got a 5735 album coming out. And we got... Uh, Rebel. Then, then my album's coming out. And then, yeah. and then, what what we gonna call your album? I call your album the Gouda album, like that cheese, baby. You know that My cheese. Album? We call it. Yeah, that's what I call it. I call it the Gouda. Oh, the because Gouda. Of, because of the song. Yeah. Though? And don't get it twisted. Rebel, Rebel got an album called, called Hood, Hood Fellas, and then he got another album. It's like right. it's, it's man. Man, more, that boy Rebel is coming hard. He showed me his man. album. Ma hey, look, Monster's coming out with an album, 5735 member, called Monster Mash with, with Neo Death Screw. I'm telling you, bro, 2020 done resurrected us. Check it out. It's about 9.15 in this program. Juan, where you at? Juan Villa Real, man. Tap in, okay. man, so I can put you in. Grim, hey, right. why don't you do me a favor, man? Go on, go on, get out, man. I, 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 I'm done, man. Go on, man. Murder one. What's up, murder one? What's going down? That's how you do, hey, man. Make, huh? That's how you do. It's rocks. That's how you. That's how I do you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Wow. When Juan, when Juan Villarreal, the one and only, the one and only, is gonna speak, man. That's hey. how I'm gonna do you. There you go. There goes Juan right there. Get out, man. All right, get out, friend. All right, all right. I'll see I, you later, man. Team. All right, bye, y'all, man. man. We'll see y'all, man. You know I'll, I'll see y'all on the back on the back side. All right, lo all love, one man. We can't see you, man. I know you're gonna give it to him, man. Don't tell, don't tell too many, too many personal stories. Man, get out, man, so I can fucking tap in on this mother. I love you, Graham. I love you, baby. I right, love you, bye. Bye. Yeah, we gonna we gonna tap in. We gonna tap in with one. I'm gonna go live with one G right now. I just tapped in. Man, right now, if you want your jewelry, if you want your jewelry, hold on, Juan. If you want your jewelry, you have to go to at Melo the Jeweler. Go to at Melo the Jeweler. That's my nephew. That's where you get your pendants. That's where you get your grills. Look at my teeth, man. I, I need a new grill right now. What's up, Juan? What up, bro? 
Shadow. Man, hold up, man. That's my boy right there, man. How you been? I'm good, bro. Grinding, man. Still grinding. Getting love from a lot of people. I see you getting love, all the hearts, and you and Grim. I couldn't wait. Nah, to that's you bro. getting the hearts. That's, yeah, that's you that's getting that's the hearts, right. man. They don't love me, man. They that's, just, you know what I'm saying? Man. They give me respect, man, but they love you, man. man they, they love you too, bro. We, we wouldn't even be where we at without each other. Like, no dude, shit, dude. We, we were little. Kids. I don't think. I don't. People didn't. They don't even know that. Like people don't even know. Hey, about, you know what I mean? I, I was about to say the same thing. I don't think they know. I don't think they really know that when we was coming up doing our thing, you was coming up doing your comedy thing. Yep. And let them know. Let them know how close we were when you was coming up and we was coming yeah. up. How close were you? Where did you yeah. live back then? Willow Creek apartment. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then we got evicted, and we ended up moving with Grim. Grim had a room in the back of his house, so we Grim, so y'all can stay here. Me, my ex-wife, and my kids were living in, in a room back there, bro. Still funny as shit. Still beating up stages, but that—that's where we were at. That's yeah. That was that was going on, man. But like, they that's didn't even know, like. Like I had been on TV maybe uh maybe two times, three times I did BET, right? So right. I come ho- I come home and my son's got this cassette. Now my kids are little, you know what I mean? They're they're little, bro. And bro, it was uh it was look dad, check this out. And then the beat started, and then the first thing, you know what I mean? Straight becoming the numbers in respect of this is real. If you catch it by my <gasps> I'm like, oh shit, what? And, and I and I'm start jamming it. I'm like, whoa, this is jamming. And then praise, and when I kick it in Magnolia, people say, yeah, I heard it. I was like, oh, shit. Like, bro, everybody was just banging that song. Just bam, bam. And then at the end, yes, when everybody goes crazy. Yeah, everybody, when everybody went crazy and started yelling and screaming and stuff, eh, shout there. Man, my four boys were jumping. We couldn't stop them. When that song would play, at the, at the end, we had to let them go. Me and my ex-wife would just let them go. They would run around, tear down <laughs> shit. Southeast, they would just be kicking shit. It was four little dudes. I like let, let them go, let them go. Let them. <laughs> they don't even know hey. that, bro. Like, so, so one. That was they, the first they, song they, that you heard. Yeah, and they told me, Dad, that they're Mexicans, and my ex-wife said, "Man, they're from Houston. They're from Southeast." I'm like, "What?" Apollo like, Shade, hey, what's up, baby? What David up, Salazar. And I was like, "Man, dude, this is for real." And y'all were performing at Boomerang. So yeah. My, my, my oh son, shit! My, my Jimmy son, Olsen. Yes, the '97 night. My my sons go, Dad, get dressed, cause I had just landed. Apollo Dad, Shade, what's up, like, baby? Get, get dressed. Jake Dad. off. They're, they're performing. Nine one nine boomerang. one nine. What's up, baby? So I I took off the boomerang. I got dressed. I told my wife, I'll be back. I'm gonna go. Whatever, my right. I'm gonna go. And I I got in the car. I got dressed. And I that's the first time I met SPM. I didn't know SPM at the time. And he's selling. Oh cassettes. shit! He was selling cassettes, and I was like, uh, "He goes, man, you here to support?" And this and I'm like, "Yeah, man, I'm, I'm gonna check out Aggravated. I want to meet Aggravated." And, and he's like, "Man, won't you buy one of my cassettes?" And and I was like, uh, "All right, bro. He's you know Mexican. I'm supporting the last time. I gave him five. I gave him a ten. He goes, it's five dollars. All right, I gave him a ten, and I was broke. Jazz died by the six fourteen. I, I, I was waiting for my five dollars back, and this fucker goes, "I ain't got no change." <laughs> And what? I'm like, what? So he gave me two cassettes. Ah. I'm like, what the fuck? Is, you, you you selling nickels and you ain't got a nickel on you, like? The- <laughs> <laughs> hey, he always been a hustler like that, yeah, man. See how like he that. did you? Yeah. So he gave you two. So he gave you two CDs. Yeah. Cause I you did. you gave him ten dollars and he didn't have chains. And he said, well, I ain't got chains, so he gave me two CDs. <laughs> he gave me two D- cassettes, bro. Ah, it, wasn't like, it, wasn't no CD. it was cassettes, man. And then, oh, and then, my God. And then at that, a cassette? Oh, yeah, my God. Bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> then, then that's when I, I, I started meeting y'all, man. I met Filetto. What's up? Y'all, What's y'all, up, bro. David? What's up, Jay Love? Started hanging out, started talking, and let's do something, bro. And, Bucket loads. Man, I seen y'all wrecking in car shows and stuff, so I told my manager, and uh, I said, you know, because I have my, my manager at the time, my attorney was a, you know, he was a state rep, Ron Wilson. He was representing uh, Kim Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler and uh, 
ghetto boy. He was representing a lot of people, bro. So he, he's the one that, that, that took care of me. And I met him through Al Freeman. Al Freeman is, is a comic who told him, you got to see this little Mexican dude. You got to see him. He did not want to see me, but he saw me. And then after that, he looked out for me. You know, I was I was on probation at the time, whatever. He went and took care of all that for me, dude. Pro bono, just said, wow. no, you don't make it. Took care of all that. So I had a state representative representing me. Little Mesky living at, at some ghetto ass apartment. J Love. Badass attorney like that, bro. So then Man, this dude that, that, that's what this dude named, What's up? This dude named David Salazar said he'd been watching you. His wife got you tuned in since Comic View. And then J Love said what's up. You know what I'm saying? He said he'd been watching you since uh J uh David Salazar since Comic View, bro. Yeah, dude. You know what I'm saying? I did it eleven times. I'm the only one who's done it eleven times. Out of all the comedians, wow. yeah, that was not a host. I did it 11 times and I'm a Mexican dude, so that's, I'm the only one. So I, I take pride in that. And then from Houston, from Houston. Ace time. Uh, yeah, bro, it was straight love, man. They, they gave me a lot of love. Cause it happened real fast for me, Shadow. I was doing comedy. I know, eight, I know. I was doing comedy eight months and I got on an HBO and BET. Then I'm going What's to up, LA Rick, Rick filming Astro? And stuff. Then I'm hanging out with uh, Eddie Griffin and you know, Martin, all these Arsenio, and then, you know, Pac, you know, Tupac used to love Eddie Griffin, so him and Eddie- Jessica were Trejo, what's up, then, Jessica? Then he saw me, so I got to kick it with Pac. We talked about Houston. He had a lot of love for Houston. Uh, he liked Bruce Lee. Me and Pac talked about Bruce just Lee. Told it, was, yeah. it, was just, it was just badass, bro. And then I come back to Houston and go to Willow Creek, and, and nobody would believe me. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, man, I saw you on TV. Like, bro, I was hanging out with Eddie Griffin, Tupac, Paul Mooney, all these Carlos Mencia, Paul Rodriguez. Oh, oh wait. Yeah, so wait man. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You met Tupac? Yeah, bro. Like, you took, you, know, you used I, to hang out with Tupac? Club, because I don't want people to take it to another level, because people wouldn't believe me at first. Because, you know, when I kicked it with him, whatever, he wasn't, he wasn't like Pac, like blowing up yet. He was already did Above the Rim, did his movies. But uh, I met him before he got locked up. And afterwards, I only met him one time. You know, we hung out one time with Eddie Griffin. Because Eddie Griffin yeah. and Eddie were cool. They used to trade books. This is clean. Yeah. So we met him, but dude, we smoked, man. And he was like, he's like, so man, you, you, you from H Town? You see, I went on stage, man. You know, we, we say certain words. You know, they're, they're bad words now, like the N-word or whatever. Like, I, I would say, I sit nigga on stage in front of black right. people, and I got a standard ovation. So they, they've never seen that before. Like, they don't they do not do that. So when I got off okay. stage, he had me call, he called me over. And he's like, what's up, man? He's like, he's like, shit, you real? And I was like, nigga, you pot. And we, and we started talking, where you from? I said, I'm from Houston. I love H-Town. Talked about Houston, talked about the ghetto boys, the music. I mean, talk wow. about, yeah, it was, dude, and this was just like a a 20 minute conversation. You know what I mean? So, wow. but it was cool, man, because one time we went downstairs in the lab factory. We were there, we went downstairs and went outside and me and him, we just kicked it and spoke in the blood. That's when we talked about Bruce Lee, about the game. Shut the fuck up. How, how to adapt, how to grow, having the crossover. He's like, look, man, I saw you rock yeah, like 300 niggas, man. You went, you did Fat Two. Fat Tuesdays was like, like all the hip, like, you know, the BET comics. Like, Fat yeah. Tuesdays, and, and it was like, you know, a black night, I guess, to, to say it right. right. Yeah, so everybody pop in there. You know, Martin and Chris Tucker, Steve Harvey, uh, Cedric, DL, Eddie Griffin will be there. Uh, Tom Mooney, George Wallace, Sinbad, uh, John Singleton. I mean, just everybody, bro. Everybody was popping in there. So I was there, they'd be like, oh, that's Juan from Houston, throw him on stage. So they would put a little Mexican on stage, and I was like, what's up, nigga? It is, and they were just like, whoa, and they loved it, dude, and they showed me a lot of love, dude. Like, I got, Damn. it was crazy. Then I came back, and then I started hearing about, you know, y'all, y'all's music and everything, and that's when I said, hey, man, let's do something. Let's do yeah. something together, bro, and that's what we did that, that show, man, in Tequilas, bro. That was one of the first Man, I was gonna say. When you, that's what I'm saying. The first time, like, we knew each other. We had to know each other because you was living with my brother. You was doing that shit and everything. And we'll get into that. 
But the first show we did was Tequila's, man. Tell me what kind of show that was for you, the Tequila's Bar show. I was like, man, I got to promote these guys. I went to the owner of Tequila. I said, look, we're going to do a rap show. No, we do Tejano. I'm like, well, give me an off night. They gave me an off night. And then I booked you guys and, and SPM. You know, he was like, you know I mean, SPM, I don't know if you know this or not, but he wanted to close the show. And I said, hey, bro, uh, you know, I've always been real to people. And I'm like, I don't think you want to follow Aggravated. I got love for you, but I'm being real. Like, people love you. They're going to show you love, but they, they, this is aggravated, bro. Like, you, yeah. you, you got to understand that. He's like, all right, all right. And, and he went up, performed in the state. But y'all never seen me do comedy in front of, like, like some G's and stuff. Right. So I, I remember looking at you on the stairs, kind of like, could I have my ex-wife and her sister work the door? Like, we, we had the right. whole club on lock, dude. We had the... People in the parking lot, we had this. I had some some food upstairs for y'all. Remember, I got some little munchies and Cheetos and shit and chips <laughs> and side side and fucking <laughs> Gatorade and some bud. Yeah. I was the promoter. That was bro. our rider. That was our rider back yeah. in those days. We just want some food and some bud. I like, got you. And bro, we, we sold it out, man. We did good, man. We did $10 y'all promoted it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You y'all did good. Cause I remember Y'all got 800, somebody else got 800, yeah. and, and Aggravated had to split 800, so we got yeah. $100 each. I, I remember that. I remember saying that, dude. I, I remember saying, I, I remember, I still feel bad about that, because I was like. Nah, don't feel bad. No, no, don't no, feel no, bad. No, no, hey, no, that was, that's, that, that was, that's just the problems of being within the group, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we had to split. <laughs> no, but but we, we that's, what, that's what we had talked about. We said we're going to split it up three ways. Because Lowe yeah. was supposed to help him sell some tickets. And he didn't yeah. sell very many. I was like, hey, bro, you're supposed to be help grinding and shit. You know what I mean? Fucking like, Lowe's. To sell some tickets. So, yeah, man, we made, <laughs> we, we made 2400 and we all we all split it up. We all. Three ways. You yeah. got 800 Lowe's got 800 and Aggravated got 800 So we got $100 on each. $113 each. <laughs> I, I was doing the math for y'all, like. I don't know about you. That's part of being the group, them. baby. Yep. <laughs> but, bro, that hey. show was just killer, man. The whole that night. That shit was just, off the fucking chain. I'll people, never forget. Those people I'll never all forget. Over it was people all over I'll Houston. never forget the tequila show. That was, you know what, though, was funny, Juan, is that show, you fucking, uh, that was your show. That wasn't our show. That was your show. And you were doing your comedy thing, and you brought us on. You didn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? And you did that for us, you know what I'm saying? And Carlos. And man, I'll never forget you. I'll never forgive you. I mean, I'll forget you for doing that. You didn't have to do that. And I appreciate you doing that shit, bro. Oh, man, I mean, I... ever since we've been together, since, you know, Boomerang and all that shit, we've been through a lot, bro. We, yeah, In fact, yeah. there was a situation that we went on tour one time. Oh my God. And when, and when we went on tour one time, we had a tour bus experience man Woo. what the fuck happened on that tour bus man let 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 my followers know what happened when we was in you know what i'm saying las cruzas to silver city on devil's mount mountain Tell them, that, man. That, that, that's a mountain like you know the above sea level thing it's like and then these fuckers wanted to take a shortcut because we were running late and i was you know I, I, I've been I've been traveling to New Mexico with, with my manager and stuff, but not in a bus. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, people said, because like two people said, oh, no, no. And they just thought it was easy. Let's do it. Let's do it. Bro, we were slight. We were doing 10 miles an hour. It took us like almost three hours to go fucking 70 miles or 80 miles from there, dude. Like <laughs> sliding, like sliding, bro. Like. People were, remember Low G, uh, he got that blanket or whatever, he's gonna kill a bear or whatever, he was ready to. <laughs> I, I don't know if you remember this shadow, but I went to the door. I walked to the front of the bus and I told the bus driver, open the fucking door. Like, just leave him open. He's like, for what? Yeah. He was like, for what? He's all nervous. I'm like, cause if the bus falls, it's gonna fall this way and I'm gonna jump out this way. Like, I'm, <laughs> like, I'm gonna make it. 
Like, I, I was like, hey, man, I'm just letting y'all know I'm going to make it, motherfucker. I see Rambo. Yeah. I will kill a pig and run. I can live in this goddamn world. Like, shit. That was one of the I remember that things. shit. Bro, I was, hey. that, was, that was some scary shit, bro. That was hey, no, scary, no bro. bullshit. Baby Anybody tonight, that was bro. on that bus that night remembers <laughs> that night. And we went, We what happened was we were supposed to be in, in Silver City, you know what I'm saying, at a certain time. We left from Las Cruces. There was a wreck on the way, and we were late as it was. And Tootie says, why are we going around the mountain? Why don't we just go through the mountain? There's there's a, there's a, he looked at a map. Back then, I we know. didn't have, no, no. we didn't have GPS. No, no, but I was so he said, military. let's go through. I was in the military. So when I showed yeah. them, I'm strong. Okay, we can, yeah, we can go that road. Cause I was, I was being nosy and I was, you know, I was the one doing it. Y'all were rappers and shit. I'm a guy man, like, hold on fucker. Let me see what's going on. Cause I'm used to calling the shots when I'm on tour. Like I tell my manager, my bus driver, what the fuck to do, where to go, how to do this, whatever. So I wanted to know what was going on. So I looked at the map and I was like, man, this looks dangerous, bro. This looks pretty steep. There's no ravines. There's no, like I knew the terrain. Like, I knew the terrain, bro, and I'm like, okay. So I grabbed my shit, I put some stuff in my bag, my jacket, whatever. I was standing right by the door. I'm like, yeah. if this bitch falls, I'll make I remember it. that. I'll tell everybody the stories, because I ain't going to be no Richie Valens. But, dude. Hey, hey but I remember. All that talent. On you that started bus, it. Bro. All that You started it. Bus, dude. All that talent. And Low G. Low G got red right next to you, and he started putting napkins in his ear, and he was holding a fork and a knife, and we were like, <laughs> Low G started next to you with a blanket, yeah. and, he, and both of y'all were by the door, and then uh, we started, what, what are you gonna do, Low G? What are you gonna do? Why do you have a fork in it? And I, well, if I see the abominable snowman, I'm going yeah. out with Juan. I'm going out with Juan. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. You know, I was like, y'all motherfuckers are crazy. Who was asleep during the whole fucking, the whole fucking trip on the way to fucking Super City? Who was asleep? <laughs> SPL? <laughs> Low? That motherfucker? Shit. <laughs> I, I, man, I, I had a talk with him that night. I like, hey, Damn. bro. Like, my manager's pissed that I was on that bus. And I had to explain all my shit to my people. And back then, there was yeah. no GPS or no nothing. So when they find out we took that mountain on the bus, like, what the fuck? Like, how, much is that, how much are they paying you again? Like, not that much. Man, <laughs> man we went 15,000 feet on yeah, that bro. mountain. Yeah, but it wasn't hard going up. It was oh. going down. It was going down that the brakes, we had to slide and we were slipping and shit, man. Man, that was crazy, man. And, and I told There's him, another story. I told There's him, another driver, story. Like, you need to learn your lesson? Because remember, dude, when he stopped the bus, remember how fucking orange the brakes were? Remember? Oh! The dude, they were glowing, yeah. bro. You can smell they it. They were glowing. They were glowing orange. And I told the bus driver, hey, fucker, you, you, do, you need to learn the first time. Like, you didn't learn. Hey. And then when we got there, the guy that opened up the venue, he had two kids. And both the kids asked us, why y'all so late? And we're like, man, we were up this mountain. We were trying to come down. And the little kid goes, y'all mean y'all rode devil's back? We don't even ride through there in the summertime. We were like, oh, fuck. There was a pause there for a minute. When he said that, everybody heard that. Bash, everybody heard that. Everybody like, like, what the fuck look, is that? People die on there. Look, <laughs> look, you were on there. Bash was on there. Pinstress, Low G, Pimpress. SPM, Grim, Big Bird, me, Rashid. Uh, who else? Low G. You Man. know what I'm saying? We all could have died that night. We yeah. all could have been wiped out. Yeah. That night, man. Well, I was, I was gonna make it. I'm a survivor, niggas. I was gonna make it. Oh yeah, you. Oh, when well, you were by the door. Yeah, I was you gonna be. The, I, I was gonna be the one on TV explaining the whole story. Like, hey, you're not gonna believe this. You're not gonna believe this. Fucking <laughs> what? Uh, I hey, made, I would have made us some shit too. But before the bus <laughs> fell, I hit the bus driver three times in the face. Uh, 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 puto. It's your fault. <laughs> I, I, said, I said, let me see your license. I told the bus driver, let me see your license because he didn't like me. He didn't. He tried to get him mad at me because I was questioning his fucking, his, you know what I mean? His driving skills. No, I like, remember. Bro, what the fuck? Like, just back in, bitch. We couldn't back into the back of that club. 
He did it like four times. Yeah. Like, like, you want me to drive, motherfucker? Like, what the fuck, man? Hey, that would have been the end of it all, man. Hey, before all that, let me let me let me bring you back. Let me bring you back. So I talked to you earlier and you had brought up an incident that happened to me, and I didn't know this, but you were living with my brother back in the days when everybody from Aggravated went to jail because of that incident that happened oh, at Hollabaloos. And you told me, you know, because Ron Wilson, State Representative Ron, Ron Wilson was the one that, that that cleared everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So let all my followers know, because everybody, if you don't know all my followers, let me let me let me prelim this. So what happened was everybody was at Holla Blues, right? Not everybody. It was like Ike Man, no, Villain. It was, it was it was Villain, Villero, and Lord Logo. No, no. Okay. It, it was it was Villain, Villero, I think, and Ike Man. And Ike Man. And Ike because Lord Loco was was black and they remember I don't I don't know if he got in trouble too, but because <laughs> he goes, man, I wasn't even there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Because they said it was a you know there was always fights at Hollywood, bro. That's what you went there for. Like, man, I'm gonna go see if I can square up with motherfuckers. See what's up. So you know there was some fights and shit, and this dude got beat up pretty bad. And and Ike Man and, and, and Filetto and them they, they were just you know villains. They were just looking like fuck. And somebody said, aggravated did it. And me and Grim. Yeah, well, we what happened, what happened, Juan. We were in, the, in his What happened, Juan, they were, they were passing out promo of, of their next album, and there was a picture of the promo. And they asked the dude who did it, and he looked at the promo, and he says, all of them except for the black dude. Yep, yep. <laughs> Remember? That, yep. So, and so tell them the story. I don't want. I don't mean to cut you off. Tell them the story. Because because me and Grim, we was in the car the, that night. The wow, night I didn't know that. Yeah, we was in the car. We were smoking. We were talking. We were, we were bullshitting, and then uh, like two days later or the next day, shit started happening real quick, and it's like, hey, bro, I think I think I'm going to turn myself in. Like for what? He goes, yeah, they just said we were at Hollabaloo's. And I tried to tell the people, like, no, we were kicking it. I was here with them in a fucking car. He had to go to work the next right. day. Like, yeah, and, and they didn't believe me and stuff. So that's when I said, okay, that's when I got Ron Wilson. And people were like, so Ron Wilson. State is representative. Like, yeah, because that's a, a state rep, dude, and he's an attorney. His retainer's like, you know, ten to $20,000 just to have him on standby. Yeah. So when right. I walked in, and said, well, Ron Wilson is going to represent him. They, they were coming up to me, so Ron Wilson is gonna come in here to yeah, for aggravated. I'm like, yeah, they that he's my friend. And it's that and then and then when Ron walked in there, he shut shit down, bro. Ron went in there, yeah. ta -ta 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 y'all dismissed. Cause you know, y'all got a probation, y'all had to do a whole bunch of shit. That that was No, crazy. my brother my brother had a my brother had an ankle bracelet. Yeah. Villain, villain stayed in there the whole time. He, he didn't have no bond. He didn't have no bond. And, and, and Ron Wilson hooked him up, got him out, you know, him and Prankster. And Ron Wilson, state representative Ron Wilson, ended up on the most hated album. He played guitar. Yeah. He played guitar on one of the songs. On the, And if you look at the credits, it says state representative Ron Wilson, guitar lit. Yep. And that was you, and that was your doing, cause you knew him. You, you're the one that got everybody said, off on that shit. I said, go get my boys, man. They didn't do shit because y'all didn't do it. I'm like, man, go right. get my boys, Ron. And Ron's like, and and I start said everything's cool because me and Grant would talk about it in the car. He would give me a joint because he was he couldn't he couldn't smoke. And, and right. He goes, hey man. He goes, I wrote something, man. Here, smoke this. So I I was smoking. I was smoking. And after about 15, 20 minutes, I was buzzing. He goes, check it out, I wrote something. And that's when he wrote that. He goes, well, I remember it because he had that ankle bracelet and he couldn't smoke. And he didn't really right. drink, he didn't really drink or do nothing else but smoke little bud. You know what I mean? Like he didn't do right, cigarettes. Right. I don't remember him doing cigarettes or doing I remember him nah. drinking a beer every now and then, but I think yeah. that I think that night he was drinking a beer because he couldn't smoke. And you know, I didn't really have blood back then. Like, yeah, I smoke fucking. And he was watching me smoke. And then he came out with that uh, uh, from Free World. He goes like, he goes, check it out. This and he's like, I don't 
Bail on house arrest, and it's once a week with the European test bond agents. He's got by your dress, but can you see what I'm trying to stress? I'm out of the free, but it's like I'm locked, can't hit no weed. Gotta watch that clock, gotta fake them cops when they bust them shots with the body drops. I mean, he, he did it. And, and, and bro, when he did it in the car, he did it with fucking passion. I can't do it like him because he's got that voice. You know what I mean? I know I sound a little bit better. I'm sorry, Grim. I'm sorry. But no, nah, dude. Like, I felt that shit. Like, I was like, I, I was Damn. lucky. Bro. I was lucky. I got to sit there and let him just, he would just freestyle, give me a joint, just in his car with music. And, dude, he would just freestyle and go, bro. All that so shit. That's, so that's where Free World came from. That's where that, Free World came that, from, that incident. That incident right there, bro. Cause dude, y'all didn't even do Damn. that. Damn, y'all weren't even there, bro. And I told Ron. I didn't even know that shit, Juan. Yeah, I told. See, Ron man, Wilson. that's what I'm talking about. I love the fact that I have real motherfuckers like you. We've been through this shit. You came up with us. You're, you're, a, man. I love you, man. Much, love much, love. much respect, man, to your your career. And you, you've done it. You, you made it. You're, you're one of the Mexicanos that got out of Southeast Houston. And and dude, man, and I was trying to bring people with me, man. I was trying to bring up nah. with me. Come on, let's go. I was trying to bring people with me. I was trying to lace them up to the game. Some people listen, some people listen. I mean, they didn't. Some people did their own things. They grew apart, whatever. But I was trying to help out as many people as I can, dude. Because you know what? Different parts of Houston don't like each other, and I get it. But when you're on the road, you in Oklahoma, you in LA. You from anywhere, and somebody says Houston, or they what's up? You from Mesa? I'm from Houston. It don't even matter what part. What's your you ain't yeah. Mesa? What's your nigga? And and it's just love. And then they be like, where you from? Like I grew up in the Arbor and Southeast, and man, I'm from Third Ward. They like, and, and it was just love. So when you yeah. see somebody from Houston, that's what people didn't understand. It's like, hold on, bro. All these Houston comics are you know kind of having little different circles here, or different that. Like no. We're not supposed to compete against each other. We're supposed to work together right. and represent Houston. And they're like, right. oh, they're like, bro, I've been on the fucking road. I've been on the road yeah. with Lee Harvey and Cedric and Paul Mooney and Sinbad yeah. and Chris Rock and Eddie Griffin. Like, I learned shit. I done listened yeah. to groups and, and kid and play. And, you know, Pac told me about the game and a whole bunch of shit. Fuckers like, listen Preach to it. Me. Preach it, Juan. Preach it. Yeah. But these little motherfuckers were all barred out. Nah, uh. I would, I would, I would, I would hey, hey, my brother. I would drop my brother, my brother, my brother used to tell me he used to be he used to be so fascinated and so lucky that he would watch you write your your comedy. You know, write your write your 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 you know everything that you would do. And your material that you would do, he would sit there just like you would watch him write Free World. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He was he was so blessed that he was able to sit there and watch a comedian. Cause you know, we don't know. We we I mean, let him know, dude. It, th this is a whole it's a whole different world. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's the same world, but it's a day. It's the same world. And he loved the fact that he would watch you write your material, bro. Yeah. And I would tell him, I was like, watch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck this up, Graham. Like, cause I would write, cause I, I never, I've never written a whole joke. I would write the topic. So he got to hear me go, blah, 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 blah. Like, oh, wait a minute. Blah, 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 blah. Man, I swear to God, that son of a bitch. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, hold up, dog. And then, dude, I was, he saw the, uh, he saw the growth. He was watching right. me. And he, he would tell me, like, fuck, oh, bro, how do you do that shit? And I'm like, I don't know, bro. I just look at me. I just think. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the thing, bro. When I got to LA, when I got to LA, people were dissecting my comedy. They were trying to right. say, well, okay, that, that's a callback. Now, it's kind of strange how he could have done that first, but he didn't. Why is his setup two minutes? He can't have a two minute setup because, right. you know, because in LA, so, you know, setup, punchline, tag. Ba -ba -boom, bam. Sometimes a callback. And me, I was learning because, was, you know, Fileto, I got so much love and respect for that dude, one of the baddest producers. He would tell rappers, young rappers, you gotta, you gotta rap one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
And then you're natural. I, yeah, and then I went home. You no, know, Fileto was telling these rappers that. Then I went home right. to listen to Tupac, and I said, "Hey, Fileto, Tupac don't do that." Right. Like Tupac don't go one, two, three, four. He goes one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. One, two, right. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, wow. three, four. One. And and wow. then and Fileto looked at me and said. Right. Oh, <laughs> like, cause I'm like, if Tupac is doing it like that, why ain't y'all doing it like that? And, yeah, yeah. You know, but but he said a oh, Tupac ain't like that. So my comedy is not set up punchline tag. Sometimes I'll work on a joke, two and a half minute setup, where it's just quiet. Right. It's just quiet for two and a half minutes. But I got the fucking people captivated, bro. The shit that I'm saying, I'm just putting them in. They don't even know it, bro. I'm just they're just like, whoa. And then, put the die, put the die, 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 die. And then, boom, and then, then I crush them. So that's how I wrote my, my stand up. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, people think that I just freestyle. A lot of people, right. that's off the dome. He does it off the dome. Now, look, Shadow, when I, when I started selling out in Odessa and Lubbock and started drawing a thousand people at $30, bro, you know, we get the door. So. Right. That's how I wrote my comedy. Sometimes I would think of something on stage and it would work. Thanks, like, time. Oh, hold on. And I, and then I would do that. So people would tell me like, I can't believe you, you could just freestyle and go off the dome. I'm like, hold up, bro. Right. I'm like, wait a minute. I work hard on my comedy. Right. I don't just, I don't just freestyle. Like, freestyle. People are paying $30 to come see me and, and, and they're getting dressed up oh, and making it. plans and getting babysitters and getting a haircut and getting you know dressed to go out to come see me i'm like man that's real i'm like you really think i'm gonna freestyle on, on these dudes that paid money to come see me <laughs> like right. no fucker, this material is cleaned up it's polished it's tagged it, it, it's ready it's ready to go so that's how right. i feel my sets but i can't do the same set over and over and over dude so, man you, you you're one of the best you're one of the best, you know, and, and I know that. I know we've seen you. My brother has seen you write your shit and you get it real and you come correct, you know what I'm saying? And and you're not a slouch. You've been doing this for a very long time. You're a professional. 30 years, bro. 30 years. Yeah, 30 dude. years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and dude, if they don't know, if they don't know who you are, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna know who you are. You've been doing it for a long time, man. Man, yeah, I just you know, appreciate everything. I appreciate all the love that you've given my, me and my brother. And I love the fact that you came on this show. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we're right now, we're hitting the 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 950 50. mark, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and time flies. But I want to let all my followers know that this is not the only time that I'm going to have you on this show. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, man. you're a brother. I got to go to your house, man, and kick it with you. And you know what I mean? Yeah. We got to do let's like do a vlog. For, let's do a vlog for my YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, 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 and for all y'all out hours, there, you know, bro. I know I ain't been putting up some shit. We, we need at least two hours, bro. I got to tell you some stories, fuckers. Man. Watts, the, the Rodney King thing. Uh, you know, shit that's going on now. Like, we got to. Uh, yeah. We gotta let all all our kids, man, all you young guys, or 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 you dads, if you have young kids, tell them that real G's, real G's don't go to prison. They they take care of their family. They handle their business. They they're they're, Real they're dads. They're right there. Shit yes, happens. Sir. Shit happens, and sometimes people go to jail. Doesn't mean you're a bad dad. You abandon your kids. It's just shit happens in life sometimes, and we can't explain. People fuck up. But yeah. we gotta we gotta teach our kids that we gotta teach them like man Thank listen you. and and they're doing it right now these young kids yeah. are protesting they're changing shit so yeah like, they are yeah it's like when they ask for celebrities like to speak like me and Trey the truth we we boys we we text each other all the time uh, he wanted me to go to city hall I went to city hall with them I was like what's up like I, I I'll I'll just be in the background I had to do my part. I respect good cops. I don't like bad cops. And it's, the only way it's going to stop is when good cops call out bad cops. That's what you got to yes, do, sir. man. Like, you're in that position now. Cops are just like a gang. 
So whenever right. one of you boys fuck up and it's gonna get all y'all in trouble, you need to check that motherfucker. Just like yeah. they do in real games. If, if a motherfucker fucks up, now you bringing a bunch of heat on us because you acting stupid, we gonna violate you, we gonna check you. Like that's how yeah. it goes. Like, so it's time to yeah. start checking these little, you know what I mean? So you young kids, Preach. Your, your mentality, you young kids, the world is wide open and I travel this whole country. Little fuckers, I didn't go to college and I don't have a GED. The people that I hire for me have to have a fucking degree and, and, right. and at least a high school diploma. So right. that, that's where it goes. So whether you're in this game or whatever you're doing in life and you got to be that good person and, and we got to mentor our kids the right way now. All this yes, shagging sir. and thugging and fighting for a black. And you know what? Some of the kids ain't gonna listen. That's cool, man. You do you. But take your own heat, fucker. Like, take right. your own heat. Because I ain't no snitch, but I ain't going to jail for none of you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be straight up, nigga. Like, like who did it? Man, hey. If, if the I... dude next to me did it, and he don't say nothing, because I come from an old school. Like, nigga, hold up. He didn't do that shit. I did that, sir. That was me. You let, let him go. Right. I take my right. hand. These little young motherfuckers want to do some shit, go thugging, and then it's time to pay the price, and they want their homeboy to go to jail. They're like, fuck that, nigga. Mm-mm. That ain't no real G, bro. And when you get when you get to jail, the real G's will tell you you ain't a real G. You, you Man, in jail you for tell your homeboy. You tell you want you in you jail tell for your homeboy. You... You tell me you tell me it like it is, Juan, and that's what I love about you, man. You've uh, yeah. you've always been, you know, on top of things. I mean, you were the ones, you were one of the ones that taught my brother, you know, how to kick it on the one and be on time. You know what I'm saying? Just like you're on time with your comedy, you're on time. You know, you write your shit out. You're not freestyling. You got hearts just going up, man. All these hearts are just going up, man. You know what I'm saying? And and and, I, and there's been people man. been asking me questions. They've been asking me about you and Trey and the, and the photo you did with Kid and Play and all that shit, but I ain't gonna lie. We at the oh, 955 yeah. mark, and you know what I'm saying? My brother's over there in Boulder. Two, usually, you gotta do a part two. Usually, usually we close out with my brother, but Grim, I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Juan Villarreal, he's my nigga, you know what I'm saying? He's our brother. So it's just like you're in here and you're taking Grim's spot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because man. you're my brother. And family, we got bro. so many stories. I want you to get on my vlog. Go to Shadow the OG TV. I know I ain't posted shit in a minute, but I'm fixing to get on it. My HTU album, Juan, wait till you hear my HTU album, bro. It's a fucking classic. I got 20 songs on there. Everybody else is putting 10 songs out. They're saying, Shadow, you got 20 songs. You can put two albums out. I said, nah. I'm gonna put 20, 21 songs out. I'm gonna give them the price. I'm gonna give them two albums for the price of one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And that's how we do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So everybody, I just want to thank you, thank you for showing up tonight. I appreciate all the love that you give and the support that you give us, and we give you, bro. You yeah. are the one. You know what I'm saying? Please, man, just just take us out, man. Just tell us what the fuck. You know, Bro, you're doing I, I've been, what? I've been, I've been busy for like six years. In January, I was gonna start, but the corona hit. I'm about to drop like two or three specials. I have so much material. I'm gonna drop like three specials back to back, bro. You know, just like, I just wanna do my thing. I got so much to say. My stuff is, is, is real and it's fun. You can just sit back and laugh. I ain't trying to, I'm not a, I'm not trying to teach you nothing in my comedy. I'm not trying to let you learn something. I just want you to sit back, have fun, and laugh your motherfucking ass off, bro. To some real shit. Man. That's it. Man, I'm gonna be I, I, got, man, I, I appreciate with, you, bro. I got stuff with uh, I appreciate Carlos, you. Paul Rodriguez, Kevin Hart. I got a lot of stuff coming up. I'm going to be doing a lot Good. of stuff, Trust me, bro. Good. I know you do. I know you do. And I want to let all my viewers know, right now I'm wearing a t-shirt. It's rest in peace, Lobo. You know what I'm saying? My boy DJ Lobo, he passed away. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and you know, a lot of people have been hitting him, oh, hit me up, that. saying rest in peace, Lobo. I appreciate y'all. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to let you know, Juan, man, you are always welcome to Thank show you, in. 
Right now, we want to let everybody know that at 10 o'clock, right after this show, go to Hustle Town Network on YouTube and you can check out past episodes. And this interview that we're doing, Juan Juan Villarreal right now, I said Juan Gotti. Juan Villarreal right now, because I'm going to have Juan Gotti on, by the way. I already talked to you. I got to get more tech to be on my phone. Hey, when Cedric the Entertainer, you did that thing, he goes, and now it's the scene. Juan Villarreal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they all fuck up my name, bro. Jamie Fox, <laughs> Jamie Fox, all them dudes fuck up my name. Dude, even Dougie Fresh. I did the Bad Boys of Comedy for Puffy. Even Dougie Fresh, who makes all them sound effects, couldn't say my name right, bro. Like, are you fucking serious, bro? Like, <laughs> he can do all these sound effects, but he can't say Villarreal. He said, give it up for Juan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They were pushing me. That's you, like no, that ain't me, nigga. Like, that's you. That's you. <laughs> hey, hey, Sal. Man, thanks for the love. Check it out. I'll be sick, man. I appreciate you, man. I love you, man. We're gonna see you soon, man. And I, man, take it easy. Tell your wife I said what's up, man. Tell your family. Up, tell bro. D. Tell your son and all your family, man. I said what's up, man. I love you, I'm bro. Good, man, likewise, bro. Y'all be safe, buddy. All right, we'll see you soon. Be Thanks. careful, man. I will, brother. All right. Peace. Go ahead and lock out. So check it out. Shadow the OG right here on Instagram. You got to keep it tuned in, baby. You know what I'm saying? Next week, we're going to have Jessica Jeans. That's right. Jessica Jeans is going to be on here. She's going to give us the female aspect of what's going down in the industry. She's gonna let us know what's going down with all the radio. She's the radio personality that you listen to, you know what I'm saying, on 97.9 The Box, you know what I'm saying, Hustle Town Network, right there, you know what I'm saying, on 92.1 tomorrow, tune in from 6 to 7 p.m., one hour power, you know what I'm saying, it's gonna be Sabor Sunday. 17 seconds, we are going out, you know what I'm saying, thank you for tuning in. Once again, tune in next week, Shadow, Shadow the OG, Grim and Shadow Show. It's going live, baby. Keep it live. Keep it subscribed. I love y'all. Peace.